ഭാരതമെന്ന് കേട്ടാൽ അഭിമാനപൂരിതമാകണം അന്തരംഗം കേരളമെന്ന് കേട്ടാലോ തിളയ്ക്കണം ചോര നമുക്ക് ഞരമ്പുകളിൽ ശ്യാമ സുന്ദര കേര കേദാര ഭൂമി ജനജീവിത ഫലധാന്യ സമ്പന്ന ഭൂമി ഇത് ശ്യാമ സുന്ദര കേര കേദാര ഭൂമി മാനവർക്ക് സമതമ മധുരമഹിത ലളിത കലകൾ വേറെയും മലർവാടി ഇത് ശ്യാമ സുന്ദര കിഴക്കേദാർ but this summer the politics isn't that predictable with the state capital tiruvannadapuram gearing up for an epic battle a three way contest namaskaram welcome to my south side story sesithiru you know he has got a good amount of glamour attached to him his personality his profile that counts everywhere he goes anywhere he goes so this time there will be some 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 dent in that that uh, popularity because of rajiv chandrasekhar because he is addressing the same crowd ൈസ് <laughs> 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 election season one more election season back to yeah. tiruvannadapuram you have your opponent said how are the elections looking like well it's a three cornered fight as it always is in tiruvannadapuram now for some time uh but first time in 2009 i took the seat from the communists with one of the two previous times ironically the sitting mp then who didn't contest in 2009 is now my yes. opponent 15 years later but the last two elections the bjp came second So it's very clear we have to take both parties seriously. They both have their appeal, they both have their support bases here. And I'm not uh, in any way taking anything for granted or or taking anything lightly. I think it's going to be an important uh, and serious contest. I'm looking forward to it. Tiruvannadapuram is what we identified Dr. Shashi Tharoor with. Correct, I'm it's glad about that. It's your karma bhoomi in Malayalam we say. It's not only my karma bhoomi, it's becoming my real nada now because okay. I come here when I come back to Kerala. This is now home. we know lose this is my permanent home i'm not going anywhere tiruvannadapuram is in the sondam tharoor the varimbol that is really the way one feels excellent i go there and make sketches of people within seven eight minutes i can't see whether you can see me but if you're happy if you're happy i'm happy <laughs> dr tharoor it's been 15 years of being tiruvannadapuram's representative i actually we found an archive footage from our you know india today group and uh, i'd like to play it to you oh and make God. you listen okay. to what you said back in 2009 <laughs> കഴിവുകെട്ടവരാണോ ആരും പറഞ്ഞില്ലായിരുന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ടില്ല എന്ന് പറയ കാര്യങ്ങൾ നടന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് ഇതുവരെ അവര് മാത്രമല്ലോ എം പി ആയിരിക്കുന്നത് വേറെ പാർട്ടിയിൽ നിന്നും എം പി മാര് വന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് ഈ അഞ്ചു വർഷത്തിൽ ഒരു വികസനം നടന്നിട്ടില്ല ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞത് 
panelists asking any questions they want to ask, I don't mind. But I'm not going to participate in a circus. <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's actually quite um, uh, amusing to look back on 15 years. Obviously, yes. I had no idea what I was doing the first time around. It was um, uh, a brave and perhaps some would say foolhardy venture. But I, I'm pleased to say that I was able to hold my own then, and I believe I'm still holding my own now. Hello. Good deal. Yeah, yeah, but by evening I'll be elsewhere doing other things. Lots of functions. Come, let's move on. You know, Kerala is political. Mm. The society is political. Maybe politically high, you know, charged society. So, uh, more, more or less everybody is political. Uh, his thoughts, uh, his, you know, his living, and everything is controlled uh, and guided by politics. Okay, if I'm supposed to ask, I'm an outsider, and okay. I'm going to ask somebody from Tiruvannadapuram, a native of Tiruvannadapuram, how was the last 15 years of Dr. Sashi Tharoor mm -hmm. as your representative? How yeah. do you think the what, those residents are going to respond like? Partially, it may, it may depend on what their ideological and political commitments are, and partially on which part of the constituency they live. Sashi Tharoor. Congress <laughs> He is a little bit, uh, I think, has a more weightage than the other people. He has taken Tuvantrum to the national level and international level. That's the main stuff. So you're happy with the last 15 years of Shashi Tharoor? More or less. The other part of it is that I've been able to speak for the values and principles that Keralites hold dear on the national and international stage. I've been a voice for 15 years for in the parliament and outside the parliament in various platforms for secularism in the sense of India's pluralism and diversity. So I believe that politics is not only about what you can bring in sort of transactional uh, rupee and, and project terms, but also the stands you take, the principles you articulate, what you stand for. And I believe uh, a lot of people in Kerala appreciate the fact that I stand for the civilizational values of the state. time elections, you're on the ground interacting with the voters. How has it been like so far? The Honorable Prime Minister asked me where I would like to contest in Lok Sabha. I said my first choice is uh, the capital of my land, Kerala, and he gave me this uh, opportunity. I am extremely excited. I'm extremely honored to be able to uh, appeal and fight for the people of Tirundavaram and uh, hopefully soon represent them in Parliament and in the government. Rajiv Chandrasekhar as a candidate is a smart move. For the first time, Hashi Tarur may feel, a, feel the heat a bit. BJP in Trivandrum, Rajiv Chandrasekhar especially, is likely to give the biggest fight against uh, the UDF or the LDF. <laughs> Sadhyaan <laughs> When was the first time you got to know that Rajiv Chandrasekhar is the candidate that's fielded against you? Look, it's been rumored for quite yeah, some yes, time. Yes. And in fact, I know Rajiv and I've uh, jokingly asked him in Parliament, uh, you know, the Rajiv Sabha and the Lok Sabha are much physically close to each other. So we ran into each other a couple of times going to our respective chamber and I said, oh, are you going to be contesting against me? He said, no, 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 it's Mr. Jashankar. Oh, no, 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 it's Nirmala Sitaram. I'm a consumer of news and when he asked me that question, 
obviously with some uh, trepidation i told him that look uh, i read the same papers as him and the papers are reporting that it was uh, nirmala ji or jay shankar ji and uh, i obviously am a very responsible person and i can't start talking about where i will contest unless my leadership tells me but look i welcome all opponents i've never taken the view that i should win by attacking other people i'm very happy to see the voters being given a choice so what is it one thing that you like the most about kerala oh there is so much to love kerala is a, a god's own country it is a beautiful land you know malayalis are great great uh, travelers and great people uh, very knowledgeable hard working and i consider uh, myself uh, from cut from the same cloth <laughs> in the borough when your candidacy was announced there was a perception created that you know you're not very unfamiliar to the constituency you said that rajiv chandrashekar is a business man adu pole than rajiv chandrashekar nan ariyum pakshe adithe or business karan aanu kooduthal ariya adithe thamanil adhyam appo janangalde vishwasam pin edukkan vendi varunathu appo adithe or velli velli veli aanu shashi tarur is entitled to his point of view start getting into a competition with me on who is more malayali than me or who is more malayali is a is a doomed to fail exercise and i would advise him that that is not something that he wants to get into i could see a bit of a you know similarities uh, both of you are not you know raised in kerala malayalis but not, raised outside kerala uh, had a different career then came into politics well in my case i did start off with electoral office in the case of rajiv as you know he's got uh, a rajya sabha experience so he's worked in a different way in politics from me so he's no stranger to politics but nor is he actually ever presented himself before the people to seek their votes and i'm sure he's finding that a challenge or an interesting experience anyway obviously the fourth election uh, is a lot more familiar territory than the first one i was the first one to bring into in 1996 97 the first mobile network to kerala i have created more opportunities jobs investments than shashi tharoor has ever done in his entire life it is not a game he will win Uh, it is better that he focuses on the issues that we are raising about development and progress and opportunity i need 30 seconds convince my voter that why i should not vote for rajesh shekhar or the next what has the bjp done for kerala or for trivandrum in the 10 years they've been in power which of their promises explicitly made to kerala have they fulfilled first of all i won't take 30 seconds to convince any voter i will spend a lot of time i'm not a person who jets in and jets out they believe in the theory of jumla's promise anything you like you don't have to fulfill the promise and therefore why should we take any bjp assurances and promises uh, seriously in this state i have a very clear agenda which is an agenda of uh, development opportunity progress investments jobs to create a technology hub to make transform uh, tiruvannamalai into an electronics manufacturing base kerala has nothing the bjp can point to they've done for the state or for this constituency so there are some real things to be said to people who have been deprived of development and opportunities for 10 15 years mr chandrashekar has been it minister for two and a half years has there been any any it contribution made by him until two days ago as a candidate when he announced some ai projects in the state the reality is this that for 15 years tiruvannamalai has fallen behind where it used to be this was a city that was pioneering technology and today in the in the league table of startups tiruvannamalai is number 18 as far as startups and uh, unicorns go i mean the problem with this government is they've neglected kerala and tiruvannamalai in fact they tend to neglect states that they don't rule but what we are doing is running a positive campaign telling people of uh, tiruvannamalai that what we can do is what we have already done in for the last 10 years in other parts of india we've been hearing about skill development rajiv is the minister of state for skill development also do you know that our workforce our labor force of the whole of india was 2.3% skilled in 2014 it was a genuine problem you know what the figure is 10 years later 2.4% they've gone up by 0.1% they expect to get praise on the pat on the back for that this is not a government that delivers anything except rhetoric advertisements and bombast 500 kilometers from tiruvannamalai large factories that are creating employments of lakhs of people are being built in chennai built in bangalore why is that not happening in tiruvannamalai <laughs> strong candidates of both congress and the bjp 
the left stands minimum chance but still the candidate the nature of the candidate the profile of the candidate it matters in an election in kerala wherever it is in kerala it is the candidate that matters first then comes the political considerations caste things like that ഒരു ഗ്യാപ്പിന് ശേഷം സാറ് വീണ്ടും ഒരു ഇലക്ഷൻ ഫേസ് ചെയ്യാണ് തിരുവനന്തപുരത്തിന്റെ പുതിയ ഫീലൊന്നുമല്ല തിരുവനന്തപുരത്ത് തുടർച്ചയായിട്ടുള്ള എല്ലാ കാര്യങ്ങളും അറിയുന്ന ഒരാളാണ് ഞാൻ അതുകൊണ്ട് ഇന്നലെ എത്തിയും ഇന്നത്തെയും തമ്മിൽ ഒരു കമ്പാരിസൺ നോക്കേണ്ട കാര്യമൊന്നുമില്ല പാവപ്പെട്ടവന്റെ പ്രതിനിധി ഞാൻ വ്യക്തിപരമായി ഏറ്റവും ഇഷ്ടപ്പെടുന്ന ഒരാളാണ് സത്യസന്ധനായ ഒരു മനുഷ്യനാണ് അപ്പൊ ആ ഒരു ഇതിൽ പന്നിയൻ രവീന്ദ്രൻ ജയിക്കാനാണ് സാധ്യത ഒരുപാട് ഉന്നതമായ ചിന്തകളും സവിശേഷതകളും ഉള്ള ആളാണ് പന്നിയൻ രവീന്ദ്രൻ So you are saying that Panin Ravindran is the dark horse here because there's a lot of discussion between about Rajiv Chandrasekhar and Shashi Tharoor the contest between both of them Panin Ravindran is a underdog i would say is a downtrodden grounded and he is also a former member of parliament from Tibet so he understand the pulse of the people and he represents the common man uh, the workers those people who are who are toiling masses and he also uh, can represent the aspirations of uh those youngsters the two towering fronts one the left front led by cpm and the other udf led by congress they have been there in kerala from the very beginning of ik kerala way back in 1957 even before that their organizations are very strong deep rooted south india is going to be the game changer in this election so if bjp or nda is planning to get about 400 seats definitely south india has to be one kerala has been their most inaccessible state uh, in in the entire south india bjp of course kerala is going to be difficult even in this election too some of the constituencies they will they may be able to put up a good fight mm. but i'm not sure that they will win any seat even this time you know in south india we see in karnataka karnataka is a state where the bjp has successfully cracked the formula why is it not happening in kerala even when there is anti incumbency against the left or the congress i don't think there is a formula i think for many years the udf and the ldf which were the dominant poles in kerala politics have uh, in a sense fed this poison to the people many people of kerala that the bjp is something that it is not first they uh, fed uh, this uh, falsehood that the bjp is a north indian party then they fed, fed this falsehood that bjp is somehow against some community or communities and then this communalism doesn't fly in kerala shibi a state where people of all religions have lived together amicably and in good faith and here you've got a party that has a terrible track record when it comes to minority rights uh, obviously uh, some of that is obviously worked for some years as a state with 47% minorities Where do they think they're going to get the support from? വിവിധ ജാതി മതവംശജൻ സഹജരെ പോലെ ഒന്നായി വിച്ച് ട്രാൻസ്ലേറ്റ് ടു ദിസ് ഇസ് എ ലാൻഡ് വെ പീപ്പിൾ ഫ്രം ഡിഫറെന്റ് റിലീജിയൻ ആൻഡ് കാസ്റ്റ് ഹാവ് ലിവ് ടുഗെദർ ആസ് വൺ കമ്മ്യൂണൽ ഹാമണി ഇസ് സംതിങ് ദ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് കേരള ടേക്സ് ഇമെൻസ് പ്രൈഡ് ഇൻ which over the years has become a political tool also you know a lot of times a lot of people unaware about kerala kids asking us that despite it being a hindu majority state what is going wrong for bjp in the state the, the kind of dominance of congress and other parties have been reached by the bjp in other mm-hmm. states but why not in kerala is mainly because of the kind of demographic composition of kerala 
45 percent of Kerala population belongs to the minorities. So the BJP, with all its efforts, they have been wooing the Christians, they have been doing all those things, but all the all those things have not helped them to actually win a seat. What happened in 2020 when everybody knows the yeah. only seat that they won in history, Trivandrum, that also they lost. Well, the fact is that the idea that uh, BJP speaks for all Hindus is completely preposterous. They don't. They speak for a particular kind of understanding of Hinduism, which is not the understanding that was taught to us by Mahatma Gandhi, by Swami Vivekananda, by, by most of the thinkers and spiritual leaders of, of Hinduism who have taught us, for example, of the great importance of acceptance. There is no difference in various kinds of worship. Everyone is going to the same creator and we should accept all equally. That kind of notion of Hinduism is not the Hindutva notion of Hinduism, which is excluding people rather than including and accepting people. And I don't think that Kerala is going to be receptive beyond a certain point to this kind of communal dog whistling that our ruling party and establishment specialize in. Conflate that and convert that into something that is anti one community by saying a pacha kalam, which is a, few, is a pure lie. If you do that, it, of course it will be sound like appeasement. This is a very, very important election around very important issues about the future of the youth of Tiruvandaram, the future of families of Tiruvandaram. I am here to deliver on a politics of performance. Even no gundi Kerala thre janengala paychika gadi un thoon nillya. Yenge oru Hindu reya jama agan agari kanu oru Kerala thre nillya. Even abothane baaram beri oru naada. Ibrada Hindu Muslim and Christian ni dhele dinum. Oriye kudumbathre maakala pola naada kanu. B J P ani adigarathre beri oru rajyath thre beri oru adigarathre beri oru nagel. Onda aga onda bhavishath thre kurcha varku pola maan na naariya. That is why I say the U D F and the L D F. Will always be aligned as far as this type of politics goes, which is to use half truths and full lies to confuse and appease one community. What is that appeasement politics? Appeasing whom? The minority community. Minority community. Are protection of the minorities is a result of the Communist Party or rather left, and it is not to create a, uh, I would say, chasm between the majority community or uh, minority community. It's to protect the people of Kerala. This is the one state in the country which never witnessed a communal right or a catastrophe. When we are resisting the onslaught of Hindutva, that doesn't mean that we are protecting one catchment of people or one segment of people. This is protection of the character of the state of Kerala, which is deep rooted in secularism. Sir, na and either candidates na nook karna ngle. Or side doctor Shashita or matra sir Rajiv Chandra Shekhar or Union Minister na. Either na mamalor na matra sir na guru sir baad charcha galaga na rakhna na. Either like or focus sir na either like or matra ma ya do 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 Beliau bogus sangat, abang ayah ni baru nak kena nulis lagi dia. Perdaya picu lo, percaya dia ada arti sama ibu itu lagi ayah ni. Pini ibu ramai sering je ikam mohon aku pernah ni. Ada ke? Pini apa? Terangan itu pegal tu perdaya mana beli? So a lot of people actually ask me, how does this work in Kerala? So what happens in Kerala during Lok Sabha election is so different from what happens in the Assembly election. If we look at the last ten years. In 2014, we saw the Congress-led UDF winning 16 and the left getting 4 in the Lok Sabha. Two years later, we had the assembly elections where left won 91 seats and came to power. 2019, the picture is again back with the Congress winning 19 out of the 20 seats. Again, two years later, the left makes the tally even more bigger for the assembly elections. When, it looks, when they look at the assembly elections, uh, first of all, the electoral unit is more local, more focused and smaller. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit that the CPM in particular and the left generally have organized themselves uh, extremely effectively. We always had a handicap with regard to the national election scenario because we are not seen to be the potential ruling party at the center. You know, at best they will send representatives from one state. It may be four, it may be five, uh, uh, which was the peak I've seen in my 15 years. Uh, that's not going to get them very far. Nowadays, if you go to the people, ground level, you can just talk to the people there. They will all tell you, see the left MBs have been much more effective and they are committed actually. Those parties which are committed for secularism, committed for federalism, are sent to Delhi, 
there will not be any sort of a fight or other resistance to the onslaught that is happening. Clearly, in the last two Lok Sabha elections, the biggest factor was none of this, in Tiruvandavaram in particular. It is the practice between the left and the UDF to pretend that they are opponents, but to actually cooperate and transfer votes to each other to defeat the BJP. <laughs> Sudhanram, Shashi Taru has been getting a large number of non-political, non-committed yes. votes like from the IT crowd or the new generation. Mm. So I think Rajiv Chandrasekhar's candidature will make his dent in that Shashi Taru constituency to some extent. But will it be enough for him to win the seat mm. is still a matter of uh, complete conjecture. Nobody has any clue. If such strong candidates of both Congress and the BJP, the left stands minimum chance. But still, the candidates, the nature yeah, of the candidates, the, yeah, it it matters. Counts. It is the candidate that matters first. Then comes the political considerations, caste, things like that. So, Trivandrum, in spite of all its pretensions to of being a culturally advanced state, it's highly politicized. <laughs>